Hey guys, what's going on? It is I just Rengar here back again with another video and in today's video We're gonna be watching a game that I went 18 to know in Master Elo Super super exciting game and the reason that I'm showing it to y'all is just because Well, I thought that it was awesome. So I did say uh, Riot knew about Rengar and everyone started putting me in dialogues. This is my first game that um I was playing after the Rengar nerf, so it felt really good to be able to pop off like this. Now, with that being said, <coughs> the one part of this that you missed is I did drop off a ward in the enemy's uh, topside jungle to be able to see if the Graves was going for blue buff. That way I'd be able to predict if he was trying to go for like an early gank or not. Um, also, by the way, I was testing out that auto attack on the little, little golem. I don't think that it's ideal. Now, a little quick note, I was trying to make this video originally just via like editing on Sony Vegas and I had like cut a bunch of stuff. Anyways, I spent like two and a half hours doing it and it ended up not working after I rendered it. So I'm a little bit upset about that, but we're going back through the motions. So that being said, talking a little bit about matchups. Uh, for this game, it is Jax versus the Gragas top lane. Um, in my head, I was thinking, all right, they probably go like relatively even. It probably trades a little bit back and forth. Um, mid lane, Rumble versus Karma. I was figuring that Rumble would probably be able to generate Primal if we needed it, but Karma would probably poke him down a little bit. Oh, with that being said, I did kind of tell my bot lane that the Graves is going to go bot lane and uh, paying for them to ward. And uh, they didn't really do anything. So that kind of sucks. But with that being said, uh, the bot lane is Zerimilio versus TF and Thresh. Now, TF and Thresh is a little bit of a weird... You can see my uh, my sigh where I was upset. Um, but with that being said, TF and Thresh is a little bit of a weird lane. But in my head, after seeing that uh, my team had fed first blood, which I didn't show you, I thought it was going to go poorly for bot lane. So with that being said, at this point I'm just trying to kite Graves as best I can. He flashes out of the E. I am going to be going onto him here using my W, auto, and then I survive with Empower W and thank you for the Milio shield. So at this point I do have enough HP to survive if I get like auto attacked once, maybe twice. So I'm staying close enough to the fight to be able to participate. I flash to try to uh, leap to the TF. It's actually not necessary, like at all. Honestly a waste of my flash. But with that being said, I did try to go and yoink that kill. So, not terribly disappointed about it. But, I mean, I definitely could have used it a little bit better. So, skipping ahead a little bit here. After I clear the wave and I recall, I see that Jax gets ganked top lane. And somehow this dude turns it around. Absolute legend. Now, this right here is really, really good. This leap. Um, it's very difficult to do. So, I'd recommend practicing it in the practice tool. But if you E, walk over, and then leap, you can actually make this leap. And, by the way, the reason I'm going, not going top lane is because I know that the uh, Graves is level 4. so Or level 3, actually. It might have been. Um, and the Rumble is level 5 at full HP. So I know there's really not a lot of risk to me just going for this instead of going top lane right away. So I start taking these and I'm able to secure the rift rift bugs and then run over towards this karma. Tried to leave to her, was not able to, but luckily with this slow I am able to leave to her and I really love rooting just because it allows me and my teammate to get damage down. I always try to empower to E if there's a teammate nearby. Now, with that being said, Graves is a super fun champion with interactive abilities. So, by that I mean Graves is really annoying to play against. So, at this point, I just go right back to clearing my jungle. I got a little, little bit of gold, so it would potentially be worth exploring a back here. But I think that it's best to just kind of full clear my jungle, considering that everything's going to be up by the time that I get down towards my bot side. So, we'll hop ahead a little bit here. And, as you can see... I tell my bot lane to play aggressive because earlier, if you remember, the Graves was top lane at the same time that I was top lane, which means he has things up there that he wants to get, and he's also on the same clearing path where he's going to be clearing down towards bottom. So I know that I can tell my bot lane to play a little bit more aggressive because the Graves will be there and I will be there, but I will have a level lead. Now, I intentionally don't show here, and the reason why is because I really like to be able to ambush the enemies whenever possible. So they don't know that I'm in this area. They're not exactly sure where I am. They don't know if I recalled earlier so I could be slower in my clear, but this is a phenomenal situation because I am in a position where I can go in, and you'll see me utilize that now. Now, I have four ferocity, so I use my empowered Q before leaping, leap onto the karma, and I empowered E, that way I prevent her from flashing. She still flashes, and she ends up burning to death by the rumble, so that works out super, super well for my team. Now, the next thing, and you're going to see this one more time a little bit later in this game, is sometimes you have to know when it's time to just leave an objective. So at this point, I can see that my Zeri could potentially die here. So I ulti, I run out, 
not able to get the Twisted Fate. However, we do secure a kill for it, and then you can go right back to the objective. There's so many players that I see in low elo, and even in high elo. Like, to be totally honest, I've definitely made this mistake, where... <coughs> They will be so locked into their idea of, I need to go kill this objective, or I need to go kill this camp, that they won't rotate in time to save their, their laner. Now, what you need to think about is, if you just leave like a second, second and a half faster, you cover 400 units worth of distance in that second. Do you know how much flash moves you? About 400 units. So what that, or maybe like 450, I think it's 400 though. But with that being said, that essentially means that if you just leave like a second or so faster, you are able to, um, oh, and look at this, I'm running over, getting my full velocity, but if you leave a second or two faster, you're actually able to essentially have a free flash's worth of distance, which might not matter in certain situations, like if you're just going to be going for a gank that's not on a timer or anything like that, it doesn't really matter because they would see you at the same time anyways, but if they're actively engaging your team, it does matter the faster that you get there. So at this point, I know that I have four ferocity, so I can't get like empowered Q, or I can't get queued by Thresh and like die, so that's why I'm playing so aggro there. Then I throw my E to cover my escape. Now, at this point, I know that they see the Zeri, or at least have some idea that she might be or near, by, might be nearby, and that preempts me to try to go in here. Now, I'm not going to lie, that little melee minion doing what it did kind of kind of messed me up. But what you want to do with Rengar before you try to preempt a dive is try to secure as much ferocity as possible. Now, I did that by queuing the minion. At this point, I hadn't been looking at the minimap. So I wasn't 100% sure where Graves was. So what I want you to do is watch my movement not knowing where Graves is. As soon as I kill him and then trade onto the Thresh, I flash over and then... I immediately run down, I stay kind of close to the wall, and I'm kiting while I'm auto-attacking, just to get a little bit extra damage. It only delays me like a half a second um, to kite my autos there, but then I see Graves is topside. So I'm not really as stressed, and I'm able to recall here. I do ping that Graves is going to come, he does come, and he kills him. So that being said, I run over this way, because in my head I'm like, alright, what is Graves likely to do? Probably going to be wanting to take the uh, scuttle bugs. And that is what he's doing, or Void Grubs. Now, he flashes, Jax flashes, not able to kill him, until this insane leap comes out. And honestly, it kind of shocked me that that was possible. Um, from here, I see the TF coming over the wall, and I'm able to leap to him, and take him out as well. So, working out super, super, super well for me, and for the team. By the way, if you hear my breathing, um, like in the background while I'm talking... It's because I wanted you to still get the audio of the video, so you can hear like the Rengar Qs, Ws, etc., and all the other uh, all the other noises. With that being said, I'm gonna play some background music because I just realized that there was none playing this entire time. A little bit of a mistake. So with that being said, I'll skip forward just slightly. You can see that over here, um, the Gragason is in a position to be dove. All I'm doing in the meantime is just maintaining my ferocity. Notice how I'm not using anything else. I have my hubris stacked up right now. And I have four ferocity, so I know it's a winning trade for me to go in. And we are able to kill him. I use my W because 490 damage from a turret is criminal. And then I start going on this turret. Now, because of that ward that we have in their topside jungle, I know, or the two wards, I know if Graves is coming up. And I do see him. But given the distance that he is away, and given that he's still on the wolf camp, I know that I can get at least one more plate before it's time to back off. A little bit later on, Graves does come up through here, uh, trying to find us, but we back just in time. Now, I'm doing what I always want to do, and I'm trying to farm, or I'm trying to farm uh, efficiently. We see Graves right there. I start going like I'm going to head up, and then I'm thinking, okay, I want to get four Ferocity real quick. I ulti, and I sprint directly to him, and I'm just able to save him. Now, the reason that I stopped to get that 4 Ferocity is because I know that if Jax dies, I can only win a 2v1 if um, I have 4 Ferocity. So I'm putting myself in a position to potentially win. Now, this play, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this. This is, pretty, this is pretty nuts. So you can see right here, obviously I'm a little bit close to death, and I am able to clutch that out and kill her. Really proud of that, for whatever reason. I just, I don't know, that's pretty crazy. So at this point, I come over here. I'll actually just leave this playing because, well, you'll see in a second. But I come over here. I'm taking my wolves. 
I'm trying to just kind of like heal up a little bit as I'm going because I, I mean, I have a good amount of gold, but not so much where like I feel like I need to back. And then I see, as I'm gathering my ferocity up, that the enemy is trying to alt away. So I flash and leap. If Rengar leaps, his leap will go through, like in terms of damage, unless it's canceled by something. So as an example of something you could be canceled by, uh, like the Gragas E, um, a Thresh E, which is like the Flay and the Body Slam, respectively. And then here I like kind of run down to the right slightly before I leap to get the uh, extra fruit without having to run over it. So at this point, taking down this uh, dragon, and then from here I have a ridiculous amount of gold. <coughs> So I do what any sane person does, and I finish clearing my jungle before I go and recall. Now at this point, not... Oh, actually, I forgot that this happened. So I, I do take these, and then I see that there might be a play, because Rumble's playing a little bit aggressive. I build up a little bit of ferocity, I come over here, and this, I'm not sure where their TF is. As soon as I see him, I know this is a mistake, and I run back. I feel really bad for Rumble, but it is what it is. So at this point, I get revealed, so I start running back. I don't really want to just stop right there. So I end up just deciding to full clear the rest of my jungle. And then from here, I'm able to recall. I look at their items, and always do that. I look at their items, and I determine, okay, they're not building armor. So what does that allow me to do? And what it allows me to do is it allows me to go and build Edge of Night, which is going to give me, actually, a lot of offensive stats. If they were building armor... And... What I mean by offensive stats is uh, offensive ability. Because previously I'm in a situation where I can't leap in if like Thresh and TF are together. Because I would be worried that the... When oh, I use my ulti here and I have to pivot. Never be afraid to pivot. Okay. So really quickly, going back. Because I want you guys to be able to get all of this. Now, you want to think about itemization as something that you do based on the game. It's never something that is static. So with itemization, building Edge of Night is really, really good because it enables me to leap in on the Twisted Fate, even if Thresh or uh, Gragas is on top of them, and not have to worry about being body slammed or flayed away because I have that extra um, spell shield from Edge of Night that means that I can do that and play more aggressively. Also, the health that it gives me means that I can play a little bit more aggressively as well and take plays I otherwise might want not want to take. With that being said, if the enemy uh, wasn't as behind as they are, if they had relatively even levels and they built, let's say, like, let's say TF for whatever reason, I've seen AD carries do this, built a Warden's Mail, which gives them 40 armor and, like, extra resistance to damage. I would honestly be forced into building a Sereldus Grudge if, like, the Karma was also building a little bit of armor as well. Because that puts me in a situation where I need to be able to shred that armor to be able to one-shot. So at that point, I would think, okay, I need to just wait for their uh, protection to leave them, and then I try to one-shot them. That also would enable me to do more damage to the Thresh and to the Graves who gets uh, armor innately. So it's one of those things that you really need to think of. Now, the next thing that's coming up right here that I want you to see is pivoting. So I ulti right here. When I see the Graves, I know that that's not going to work because I see Thresh, so I immediately run over to the Twisted Fate, and he flashes. So overall, I mean, yeah, he flashes away. However, I got his flash for like a 60-second cooldown of my ulti. And thank God that they didn't keep going in there because I uh, W'd a little bit late. But with that being said, I essentially used a 60-second uh, cooldown for what was a five minute cooldown unless he has like a uh, cosmic draw or not cosmic cosmic insight i think um in which case i didn't even use it for uh for five minutes i used it for like a four minute cooldown so i got like four times my value in terms of time now here i'm just kiting in and out of the bush because i know i have extra movement speed from gus walker hatchling and then i go and i take this control ward now looking at jack's bot lane he has a lot of pressure and my team's ahead so i start taking this uh rift herald with that being said, we immediately see Graves show bot lane and we see TF ulti. So I'm thinking, all right, I need to take this as soon as possible. Knowing that there's three bot lane, I know I can play a little bit more aggressive. So I enter in the enemy jungle and I immediately run to take down this tower. Because in my head, I'm thinking, all I want to do is snowball as quickly as possible. Now seeing Karma here, she wastes her Q. So I ulti, I run in, and I'm able to kill her super, super quickly. And then run back to follow up on the Rift Herald getting not only the gold for the kill, but also the gold for taking down this turret. Split with Rumble, sadly. Now, the cool thing is this uh, <laughs> Rift Herald ends up getting another charge off. So, 
With that part having happened, I just essentially clear this, then run up and go to clear my Krugs. From here, I'm able to finish that Edge of Night. And I think actually, uh, yeah, finish that Edge of Night, which is super, super big. And then from here, I'm just thinking, all right, what do I do next? My favorite thing to do in League of Legends is to go when you're ahead. Go and get four Ferocity, stack it up, and then see where the enemy is. So I can see that Karma's right there. There's no turret nearby. The very first thought on my mind is, honestly, ulti, go kill her, keep my Hubris stacked up. Then I see this, and I'm like, all right, get my four Ferocity again, because unless she's recalling, she's still going to be there. So I run down along here. I know that Graves can't near be nearby, because we saw him earlier. Because there's a bush, I use Empowered E, because I know I'll be able to get a four, uh, another four stack again uh, from, the, from the bush. And we're able to kill her super quickly. So with that being said, really, really easy to play Rengar when you get ahead. If the enemy team is split around and they're like kind of playing more spread out. When Karma showed in that uh, top side of the map, I immediately knew that it was over for her. Now here, I'm trying to go into their jungle and support the Jax by being on the opposite side uh, of him. And then I just end up being all on this side. So they kind of give him up. And I'm able to kill Twisted Fate for it. Because their entire team, for whatever reason, does some sort of loop-de-loo. And totally misses both Jax and myself. So at this point, I'm able to get a really, really nice leap off. And then rotate over to help the Jax. Now, it looks like it's a little too, a bit too late for the Jax. However, I am still able to go and take out the Gragas. And then from here... I thought I might get hooked, by the way. That's why I ran back. From here, I ran over... I see the Thresh looks a little bit too juicy. Get that. Root. And able to kill him as well. I start going in, then I realize I need to run back. Karma comes a little bit too close. I do miss my E. I'm about to die. And then the double W comes in. Super, super clutch. And I'm able to go and secure that Mountain Dragon. Now, from securing that Mountain Dragon, I'm in a position where I'm taking down this uh, top camp right here. Taking down the Krugs, and we see Graggy Ice in the top lane, I believe. So I immediately just ulti. I'm like, let's go kill this guy. The sad thing about Gragas is that this dude literally just does not want to die. So he flashes, and he has phase rush, and I'm really upset. So I start running down this way, because if he kites into my jungle, I can catch him. As soon as he kites up that far, though, I know there's zero way that he gets out. And then I just start running towards him, and... I'm able to take him down with the assistance of the Rumble. So skip forward a little bit. At this point, I want to close out the game. I'm super fed. I don't want to give them any sort of chance to come back by dying and feeding shutdowns. So I'm just telling them that we shred it very fast. Obviously, because of Milio's tanking, I don't get the Baron's Gaze debuff, which so many people don't know what that is. But essentially, whoever's tank Baron does 50% damage. So at this point, I ulti because I want to see if there's anybody nearby. I see Twisted Fate, and I'm thinking, all right, let's make this into a 45. So now it's a 45. And as you can see from that play right there, the Thresh tried to flame me, and it did absolutely nothing. Which is why the Edge of Night gives me even more offensive capabilities than something like a, like a raw damage item like Collector would give me. Like, yes, Collector gives you slightly more damage, but if you're not able to do that damage, it doesn't matter. So that's why it's really important to build things like Edge of Night in situations where you need it. And look at how fast we shred that. Oh my gosh. So with that being said, I'm going to let it play through here. <coughs> Just because we can see Jax getting into an engagement in the bot lane. I think that he's going to be able to get out, but then they start really, really over committing. So I start heading down towards there rather than just going straight towards my chickens. As you can see, Thresh misses that hook. I don't have Edge of Night, sadly. However, I am able to kill him before anything else happens. I hold on to my W because I don't want to be in a situation where I just die by getting bursted down. So I'm holding that so they cannot commit onto me. And then after that, we essentially just win the game. There's really not much else that the enemy team can do at that point. And that is GG. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your uh, your viewership of this. And hopefully, this time that I recorded it, it works out pretty well. So like I said, thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.